You got a tripod? Take a look. Don't bump it. <laughs> that was Eber's trap shot? A little bit. Let me see. Dude's already paddling out. I know, I like to do some of that. Zoom in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? I don't know, I like the shot right here. Don't bother to take a look at it, it's recording right now. I'm sure it's hitting a little bit here. That's sweet. You see it? I enjoy that. That's like the It like squishes down like this whole area waves, so you can see him like paddling out for a long time.
pull back so you can see everybody in the set on here. And then when somebody catches it, you can kind of tell. So It's getting bigger, it looks like. Yeah, let's go ahead and move up. Seems like I crossed it over. It's going to come back up, probably. Hard to tell who's a surfer out there and who's a kayaker. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Which one did you ask? Do what? Which one did you ask? Kayaker. Kayaker.
Dr. B.
mean, that's, you can pretty much, you know, just by changing your angle around the way you approach things, you can could, you could shoot most of um, yeah. And what I mean, when they need some sub subject talk about it. Alright, go. Talk now what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just clam up. Let's just clam up. <laughs> They've done all this work. Let's just clam up. <laughs> um, I don't know. You want to talk about uh, the weather? <laughs> How long have you been doing? Okay, let's 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 start yeah. off with um, Kayak's Anonymous. I heard that you two guys actually founded it. Is that was that correct? Or uh, the uh, thing? Yeah, us and a couple others. We you, that'd yeah. be pretty accurate. Yeah. I think what happened is uh, Stowe and I were working together here, and uh, we were able to work our uh, schedule around the waves, and right. so <laughs> that that was great. So, uh, we How'd you guys get started? Did did you like start off with surfing or anything? Or I mean. Well, you know, you know, some people do. A lot of people start out and, um, and they're surfboarders and they, you know, learn how to kayak and then cross over into surf kayaking. Mm -hmm. um, we and a lot of people that we surf with um, actually start out as whitewater kayakers, you know, running whitewater rivers and doing the rapids and, you know, going for that big thrill in the mountains. And so we got kind of hooked on that thrill. But, you know, here we are. You know, land, we're landlubbers way down at the coast and right. on the east coast or at least around North Carolina mm -hmm. when you're down the east coast you're a good six seven hours from a good thrilling yeah. whitewater river right. so by the time we got to the point that we really wanted to hit good powerful fun whitewater and get that excitement you know we were we were driving further and further and 10 hours yeah. to the Ocoee River and right. you know eight hours here and there and it, you know it wore down our families and, it, <laughs> and friendships and it was all kind that of kind of stuff. necessity then you decided well and it turns out <laughs> here. what's what's interesting is that the we get to paddle a lot more than uh, our friends in the mountains because we can leave the house here in 10 minutes we're at the beach there. park the car get the boat down and we're out there we can paddle for an hour two hours Get a great yeah. workout. Have yeah. uh, some great adventures. Mm -hmm. uh, these are, you know, world-class adventures. Yeah. Uh, come in, uh, and go home, go eat supper, or go right. back to work, and uh, it's a lot of fun, you know. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yeah. and then even the guys that live near rivers, you know, they'll have to pack everything up and right. go for the weekend, spend Friday night, you know, spend all day. You know, running that whole long section of river and you know, setting up shuttles for their and cars. You have to get somebody, and yeah, can, to take you out. Of yeah, that yeah, the yeah. shuttle. That's a big hassle, and yeah. we don't have to shuttle. We just go there and just have fun. Park in the parking lot, walk over the dunes, and you know, there's your adventure there waiting for you. You know, for me, that's my health club out there. I just, uh, <laughs> you know, I try the paddle two, yeah. three times a week, and yeah. uh, it's a good uh, all body exercise. And uh, just yeah, that's fun. what it's been one of the. It's been one of the really. I think one of the parts, you know, one of the things of the success of the sport, at least for all, a lot of us, is that, you know, is that flexibility and, uh, and the accessibility of the sport because, you know, we can have families, we can have full-time jobs, and we can have, you know, socialize beyond that and, and whatever it is that people do, and we can still, you know, we can still surf hardcore right. a lot, yeah. and we can, you know, you know, both of us uh, surf at least 150 days a year. We surf all winter long, and um, you know our gear's warm enough for that. So, um, you know, we we get a lot of water time, um, and get a lot more kayaking in than than most people. You, I would I would say that that other than you know pro whitewater kayakers that you know, travel around and do this for a living on a competition circuit, that there's not many more people that get more time in their kayaks yeah. than we do. Yeah. It looks like there's a big concentration of um, of you guys here. I mean. I was just looking on the internet sites and there's like you know world class this and mm -hmm. first place in mm -hmm. that and everything right here in Wilmington yeah is that um, how did that I mean is, is Wilmington just like one of the best places for this sport or we anything? have a good break here mm -hmm. and and then there's a camaraderie too I think what it takes is you get a small group of paddlers that get along well um, so you can count on these characters showing up at 7 in the morning and uh, uh, you know who else would show up and get up on Saturday morning? <laughs> <laughs> Still a time, you know. Yeah, that's a, yeah. uh, but uh, and then when you're out there, 
we, we push each other. So we had some good paddlers, some good river paddlers that get turned into good surf paddlers. Right. And then when you see somebody do something, it gives you ideas for something else. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, we get, um, we have some sponsored paddlers here, and so that helps get us to get the uh, attention from some of the vendors. We mm -hmm. get to see the new boats, uh, right. mm -hmm. uh, and then that brings more excitement, more moves, and that's helped a lot too. Otherwise, uh, you know. so yeah. So it keeps evolving. You see other guys do tricks and stuff, and you can kind mm -hmm. of do that, make that your own kind of. Yeah. yeah. New ways to do yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, and, and you know, ac accessibility to the new gear, you know, mm -hmm. that helps a lot too because if, you know, people that have, you know, there, there's a lot of people that maybe have been surfing that same boat for, for three years and they've, you know, they've pretty much maxed out the performance level of that toy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when they see somebody else come out with the latest new thing and, and rip in it in ways that they, they've been thinking about doing yeah. and that they've been wanting to do, but just, you know, their toy wouldn't take them there and that new toy comes out and they see it, you know, then they, you know, you can, you get a new lease on life almost, you know, you, mm -hmm. you know, you, cause you can get kind of stagnant and thinking, well, you know, I've kind of gone as far as I can with this. Right. And then you mm -hmm. see somebody else come out and they're yeah. doing these new things and all of a sudden you're excited to get back out there again. Right. So you it, know? Keeps, it keeps working on the stuff like that. It's yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Another thing that's always amazed me is you think a kayak is a kayak. You've got this tiny little boat with a hole in it, but each one of those has its own little shape, how the bottom is shaped, how long it is. Uh, they all make a difference. And we've, a lot of times we've brought the new boat into the beach and thought, this is going to be the greatest kayak in the world. This is so cool. Mm -hmm. And we'll take it out there and it doesn't spin or it doesn't do something. And we're kind of dumbfounded, you know, why that yeah. didn't work. And then another boat will try that and it'll uh, be fantastic. Right. Uh, so that's been uh, just interesting you know and i think most people that are in the sport like the some of the, the those aspects you know a lot of us mm -hmm. build our own boats our own paddles or uh, you know we're look at, uh, looking mm -hmm. at those angles yeah. mm -hmm. it's a real hands-on thing yeah you can see how that would kind of become like almost like you know like your whole way of life i mean if it's, you can really get into that sport i mean not only can you kayak all the time but then you can also <laughs> do everything that surrounds it all the time mm -hmm. too. I definitely think our wives would agree with that comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know uh, that Bruce has a son, 16, and you know my son's now 19. And gosh, those were good years when uh, when Bjorn was paddling and uh, Stowe was working here at the same time. And you know, so the three of us would go on these adventures and we'd talking. Uh, and Stowe, so such a good teacher, and so uh, he just is a natural he can explain these moves where I'm an old guy and I can it's like breathing I I don't know how I do it I just you go out and do it yeah. and I it always amaze me uh, seeing young Bjorn talk with uh, Stowe his mentor and they would work through these incredible moves and you now they're doing these <laughs> kick flips and things where the boat goes off a wave and they can turn and uh, do a roll sort of in midair and land it and I can remember him talking about this thing and thinking about the, those moves. It's, it's really a thing of beauty. Yeah, because a lot of times you have to figure it out. You know, mm -hmm. you, you watch the watch videos and or you, you just hear somebody describe something and, you know, you know you want to go do it. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it sounds sounds fun. You want to go do it. But uh, it takes a while. And, you know, having this, if you're out there by yourself all the time, you're just going to have to kind of figure it out. But if you got a couple other people around, that uh, you know you can work through it with, and uh, you can get that move down pretty quick. Well, how long yeah. how long does it take to get to that level to where you can, you know, say, you know, I'd like to try to do this kind of move or this kind of thing over here? Because I mean, me surfing, I just started surfing, you know, five or six months ago, and I'm still trying to go down the line, you know. Right. And so I mean, my friends will be talking about, you know, doing a floater off the top of it and all this stuff, and I'm, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I can't even begin to do that yet. So how mm. long? I mean, is it? What's the learning curve like? Well, the key okay. is, don't you think it's the Eskimo roll? So yeah, you take us. a paddle out, or kayak out there, and you're going to tip over. And uh, until you get comfortable getting a good combat roll, so you know in your mind that you're going to pop up, so you're not thinking about this, or you know, and you go through this thing where you're going to swim after the boat, and it's that's that's no fun, and we we'll lose a lot of paddlers right. uh, there where they just. 
they say enough to this. I'll go play tennis, or I'll go <laughs> cut my grass, or I'll, uh, you know, anything's more fun than this. But yeah, right. if you can work past that point, and once you know you're going to come up, then you go out and you try anything, and you can let the wave throw you around, and then you see the people uh, go real quick. And so right. some people at the end yeah. of a season, they were they're out there paddling with us in the hurricanes, nice. and but it takes not, the right person too. Yeah. You know, there's a. Uh, you know, Ralph is Ralph is, you know, historical for for taking somebody out that you know it doesn't know anything, but they're willing to go. Uh -huh. And so you know, Ralph will just kind of, you know, it's like the breathing thing. You know, he'll just take them out and just uh, you know see if they'll go <laughs> breathe. Throw them in the deep end. <laughs> yeah, throw them in the deep end of the pool. And uh, you know, if if they swim, then you know he'll he'll help them in and you know encourage them to go back out. If they go back again after a swim, then you know they're one step closer to to catching on to things. Right. And, and, uh, you but know, that's that, the kind of person that's attracted to the sport that would is. go out there in a hurricane they even think of that and say this would be cool and I really want to do that yeah. and <laughs> they'll go out there and they may have to swim back but you know they're gonna say well I really I'm gonna work on that role and I'm gonna go to these pool sessions I'm gonna go out every day and I'm gonna you know be out there next year with these guys and uh, because they're having a lot of fun and mm -hmm. I, want to, I want to go have that yeah. fun because yeah. that, that looks good. So as soon as you learn basically to, to stick in your kayak and not to fall out of it and get your roll down, I mean is that like the, a giant step towards towards uh, you know having yeah. more fun with it? Because I know yeah, when, absolutely. When, you know, when I started out surfing, my friends told me I'd, I would get so frustrated with it and everything and I did. I mean I would, it was days yeah. when I was just like, this is, you know, I mean I can't even pop up on the thing and all this stuff. But once you get past that, it's like a whole new world. You can just sort of start yep. doing That's... different stuff. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you see that you know there's there's kind of these firsts too. You know, the there's the there's the first time that you that you even paddle out, and then it's you know there's some decent sized waves, and uh, and you you know you just have the guts or, or somebody tricks you or whatever it is <laughs> that you go out and you punch through those first couple of waves, and they they slam into you and you you go up over them and jump off the back of the wave or something like that and and you get out and you survived right. you know that's yeah. like that's like stage one you know you paddled out through some decent waves and you survived do you and, remember when bjorn uh was paddling and for about the first two years we'd carry the boat out there and i'd sit it there and he'd look at it and that's ah, too big dad i don't want to do that you know or he'd go out and maybe he'd paddle out past the breaker then he would sit there the whole time all uh, for hours we'd, we'd surf for two hours and he would sit outside and just yeah, just kind of watching, you know, and and then one day he was it was at a contest and he was paddling out, and a, a rogue wave came in. I don't know where that thing came in. It was huge, and it took him and it flipped him backwards, and he rolled up, and he actually you know did a back ender. He rolled up and it, wow, that that was cool. And from that <laughs> point on, he was a kayak surfer. Yeah. And uh, you know, and it really went fast for him. You know, just mm -hmm. that was yeah. a milestone. Yeah. So there's, I mean, there's, mm -hmm. that's a big part of it is kind of taking the first hit. Learn well, that and, you're going to be okay. Yeah, you and know? seeing that yeah. you're okay, yeah. and then mm -hmm. and then you get, you know, and then you get that uh, the first time that you get hit and knocked over, and uh, and and you roll up like that, and then and that's that's you know, not only did I did I get out through some things and survive just some hits, but I. I got tumbled and tossed and confused and and mixed up underwater and yeah. and then I, and then I pop back up and I can go do it again without having to swim in or, right. or you know right. waste the time or you know get tired doing that mm. and then you know I, you know probably the you know probably the third thing is you know now you've gotten out and you know you you paddle in and you catch your first wave you actually you know you yeah. actually get up the guts to take off and try a wave and and you take off and you actually get that gliding feeling mm -hmm. in your light you know the boat lifts up and the, the waves pushing you and you're not stroking and you know yeah. all the power comes from this wave just pushing you along yeah. and um, you know that's af after you get that first good gliding sensation of taking off down a wave yeah. you know that's that's when people get hooked yeah and if you're not hooked then then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you if you still yeah if you still if you get that first good gliding sensation going down a wave, oh, yeah. and you and you look at it and you go, <laughs> has that yeah. ever happened? I mean, has anybody ever like stuck to it that long and then said, oh, that's just not for me? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, you know, we've, we've had one or you know we've had one or two. I mean, it's you know not too many people 
you know, it's not like there's um, you know thousands of people pouring into it or hundreds of people pouring into right. it like like you know sports have already caught on like mm-hmm. snowboarding or something like that where where you've got so many people pouring into the sport that you just know tons of them aren't going to like it. Um, you know, we we generally have you know usually they're buddies of ours or people that we work with or or somebody goes into a kayak shop and and says hey that looks like fun they give them our number or email address or something like that and um, and so they're you know they're usually they're usually a little bit more inclined right. to, to do well at this from the beginning there's some chromosome yeah. damage or yeah. something going yeah, there's, on there there's something mutant uh, there's, about them you know because somebody goes into this store and looks at that kayak and says I love it. That is, I want to do that. Yeah. And they've seen something. You know, Lydia was that way. She saw mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. She always knew that she wanted the kayak. Yeah. Yeah. And when I saw my first kayak, it was at a mall up in Minnesota. It was a big, long fold boat. I knew that that would be cool. Yeah. And yeah. and so I've been at it uh, 30 years now with uh, more, actually. It's embarrassing. Yeah. And and it just, you know, we're finding new things to do, and it's it's been a lot of fun, especially with this ocean out here. I mean, that ocean is just fantastic. Yeah, and and me, I bought um, I bought a, a helmet and a paddle before I even had a kayak mm-hmm. because I knew that eventually I was going to go get a kayak. But I saw this helmet and this paddle in this in this like secondhand shop mm-hmm. in Winston Salem when I was in college, and I just saw this stuff. And the paddle was, you know, it had a a den in it was kind of bent and the <laughs> and the helmet you know was, was sitting there with it and and so I just said uh, you know I'm gonna pick up kayaking eventually and so I, I just bought this stuff and it you know it sat around for a little while and, uh, and then uh, you know until I got my first boat mm-hmm. that's cool. <laughs> uh, so speaking of secondhand shops how much are uh, you know kayaks I mean can you get what's the price range like you can you can get some you know really good deals on on used equipment and all the way up to you know pretty expensive new stuff mm-hmm. but but in general you know you could you could get into um, you could get into a kayak used bottom end you know we see people routinely have picked them up for 300 bucks yeah 300 um, you know four or five hundred you actually can get a get river kayak current, that works know. well <clears throat> in the surf you know there's a few models that are really good mm-hmm. You know, and then this a new spray skirt is going to put you back a hundred dollars. You know, and you may be able to find a used one again. So, you know, there's de- there's deals out there. Yeah. And a, a lot of times, somebody's maybe getting out of it or or something like that. So they they're kind of turning over a lot of gear at the same time. So you'll get your paddle and a helmet, and a life jacket, and a spray yeah. skirt, and a boat, and kind of all these integral pieces that you need mm-hmm. to uh, just you know kind of your basic package. Some a lot of times you'll get a lot of that from the get go if you find somebody mm-hmm. that's yeah either upgrading all their gear or getting out of it. Maybe they yeah. tried it and didn't like it, mm-hmm. and all their stuff's still pristine, and you get nice. to get it for cheap, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you don't need the latest and greatest stuff oh. to have fun. I mean, that's something that, uh, you know, you, you know, we're fortunate. We've got yeah. some neat toys out here, and we've, you know, but we had a ball with this old stuff. And mm-hmm. actually, some of the older boats, they're long, and you get these great enders where you take that big long boat and drive that thing in there and the thing just launches backwards and you you know yeah who uh and we don't get that on these new shorter boats you know the new boats are on yeah. eight foot long right. and uh, you know you just don't get those awesome skyrocketing uh-huh. enders you know <laughs> so cool. so the, you know the old boats have their places yeah um so would you ever take one of these out like on a river or anything Mm, not the yeah, surf not really boats. not the ones yeah. that are designed just for surfing okay. a lot of times you've got um, you need, a lot of times you got a boat that's made of composite materials that's uh, say fiberglass Kevlar carbon fiber something like that and, um, and and they're kind of designed for the the type of impacts and things that they take from uh, on large surface areas with water pressure and that sort of thing and instead you know you go down a river and you're hitting sharp surfaces like okay. rocks and things right. like that and they're they're not really so much designed and laid up heavily to take a lot of beating on rocks. And it's a different style, I mean, of the boat too. I mean, I saw on the webpage some of them were just real long and, and, and totally round, like a big cigar. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh huh. Some of the new ones it looked like. Is that? I mean, what's what's that style? Well, you might have seen some of the creek boats. Right. There's. Uh, right. They tend to be more bulbous. They're made so when you're going down a waterfall or a steep creek that you don't jab that narrow nose behind the rock and get pinned. Get stuck, yeah. So you're looking for things that will slide off and boof off these rocks and not get pinned. Right, uh, they resurface quickly. They've got a lot of volume, that cigar right. shape, that rounded, full volume shape. 
you know, would resurface quickly. So these are more for punching through and well, these and ours are planing hulls, so they're made yeah. to plane on this. Uh, you know, yeah, you could pull them behind a motorboat real nice. It'd be perfect for that. <laughs> uh, the surface is very similar to a like a longboard, a surfboard. Mm -hmm. Where the other kayaks are tend to be, you know, they're uniform on both ends. They have the, you know, so you can go forward, backward. A mm -hmm. uh, lot of the boats that uh, we, you know, have <coughs> good luck with the surf on, they were made, they call them play boats. And so you see in the river, the boats have gotten smaller and they're made to go to one river feature and you play. You might do cartwheels with the thing. They have the narrow little slicey ends and you'll just do these kind of moves over and over and spin yeah. that boat. And, and part of it is there's a lot of surfing going on, and, and, right. and that's revolutionized uh, the sport for us because all of a sudden these uh, boats, uh, well, for example, I've been down here in the Carolinas now 13 years, and I brought my river boats. They were about 14 foot long. They mm -hmm. were cigar shaped, and they just weren't a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You would go in there, and you'd pitch pole that thing and yeah. go end for end, and you really couldn't surf the thing. And you used to talk about it too, that you know, back when you, you tried it early on and you went out and with those boats and just kind of gave up on it because, you know, there wasn't anything you could do. Yeah, you'd get caught sideways in the, in the closeout and you'd just go sideways. You couldn't escape that thing. So, you know, not much fun. And then they got down to about 10 foot long and that's when I sort of got back into that. And, mm -hmm. um, and the hulls were a little flatter and you could actually surf that thing and I know it was a uh, when I got that boat I was out uh, it was after a hurricane and I was out with my windsurfer and trying to surf in that 45 mile an hour wind you know and uh, it just wasn't going I was into the uh, docks and boat motors and it was just, it was bad news and I was kind of you know a low point and I went to the end and I saw these big waves coming in there and I think, man, that's where I want to be, and I can kayak out there. Right. And there was a, Go on the way that. back, there was a, a, somebody was selling a kayak, I think, at the ship store. It mm -hmm. was a special, uh, and I picked up my Piranha Magic Bat. Right. And it was a lot different than the ones I had used to use. And then I got to know some different. of the people, yeah. and that's why I, I got to know Stowe. Mm -hmm. And that, that part of my life opened up, and mm -hmm. so I wasted a lot of time in the oh, ocean. Yeah. But yeah. it should be fun. Yeah, so. plenty. Have something to ask you. Oh yeah, what are some of the some of the? Uh, what's on? Huh? Oh, now I'm the mic. Oh. Um, what are some of the biggest days you've ever been out of? Big. <laughs> yeah. Overhead. How, how big you want? Oh yeah. Yeah. On um, yeah. the East Coast. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh. we've been out overhead surf plenty of times on the East Remember Coast. Remember that day we were in the, in the shade of the yeah. wave? We'd be there, and all of a sudden the sun would get blotted out. It'd be dark <laughs> yeah. under there. And, yeah. Oh, that, was, that was good. Yeah, and the sun was pretty high that day, too. I mean, we were out, we were out in the afternoon. I'm not talking about, you know, we're not talking about early morning. The right. sun's rising, mm -hmm. and you get behind a little thing. You know, these were monsters chasing us down, and yeah. that thing would peak up, and you'd start dropping down, and it would just, everything would go dark. You're going so fast. We that was back when we had some of the old whitewater boats, and you were going so fast that day that you you could feel the whole boat flexing underneath you, this oil cannon, because you're going so fast that that water pressure hitting the hull was making the whole thing yeah. flex underneath you. <laughs> well, you know, Psycho Pete, uh, he was out every day of when Fran hit, except the actual day Fran hit. Uh, so the days before, the days after, and there was some incredible waves with Fran. So. You know, and afterwards it cleared. I don't know. We we put in on the you know and had to paddle out along you know to get to Masonboro. You couldn't get out on the mm -hmm. um, incredible stuff. You know, and it was you know sort of almost West Coast waves. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I've then I've I've been you know I've done some traveling to do surf kayaking as part of competition circuit, and I've been to Santa Cruz twice to surf Steamers Lane during competitions. That's one of the oldest mm -hmm. surf kayak competitions in the uh, in the world, I guess. And um, two years in a row, I've been there in 2000 and 2001. It's been really, really good in the spring. And um, so I've, I've probably surfed, um, I've probably surfed some 15 foot waves out there, just big stuff. And big your stuff. waves in Rio de Janeiro, those were, those were yeah. big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in 99 we were in Rio and uh, we had some, had some massive stuff rolling there. There's a lot of really gifted Brazilian surfers out on the surfboard circuit and you know, you, 
you don't really know why until you go down there and you mm -hmm. see the stuff they surf all the time. They get yeah. some major swells. I guess, I mean, how do you, uh, you know, shake off one of those waves? I mean, if you got this, you know, I mean, what do you do if you're like, that's not exactly the right one for me? Yeah, I mean, are you yeah. Just, you got to take it or? Well, I mean, you know, the beautiful mm -hmm. thing is, you know, it, it depends. You know, if, if you're on the East Coast and sometimes, you know, sometimes you're just stuck and yeah, you'll, you you may you know you may just be in that blast zone yeah. and you know you'll a lot of times what you do if, if you're really in the worst possible place and this monster is just going to crash right on your head what we'll do is we'll just we'll go ahead and flip over upside down and uh, let the let the bottom of the boat take the impact yeah. and so you know and then sometimes you know that's that's those are some of your wildest most fun yeah. rides because you're you're paddling out and you're just you're just digging for all you've got you know and, uh, and you see this thing just just rising up in the distance, and it's gonna just, just come and crush you. And uh, you just you're digging as hard as you can, but you, you're just watching that thing, you know, pick up, and you know you're not gonna make it over. <laughs> and so, so right at the last moment, you you know you, you flip over upside down, the thing picks you up and, and just you know swallows you, and uh, and but then spits you out. Because a lot of times, if you flip over upside down, you know the wave will right you. Yeah, and you'll come up. You. Yeah, you'll come up, and you know, you everything explodes around you, and the wa everything it goes dark and it explodes, and you're flipping around and everything, but then you, you pop up, and you're and you're surfing <laughs> because the wave rolled you up. All right. And so if you go into a right side up, sometimes in those nasty conditions, you'll just get hammered, yeah. you know. But sometimes if you flip over, the wave picks you up and flips you right side, and you're surfing. Let's go. And when you get up, you know, yeah, that's a, that's a wild one. Those are. Those that's don't the too only often. part that's not fun is when the wave grabs you and you're upside down and some of the, the hurricane waves are that way. They get kind of squat and <clears throat> big and beefy. and Really uh, powerful, yeah. And they get sort of aerated and you have a hard time getting up. And so you might have to, you know, hold your breath till it brings you yeah. in the shore. And so, you know, uh, seems like it's a lot longer than it is, but uh, yeah. that part you kind of, you yeah. think about that. Do I... What am I doing here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll drive into the sand, like upside down. Actually, I mean, we get asked that routinely. Uh, most of the people that have have seen me do it or, or the, know that I do it and maybe haven't haven't actually gotten out to watch, um, you know, that's a pretty routine question to get asked, and it's very rare. Um, you know, it, it kind of depends where you surf. You know, because a lot of times, you know, generally we go up to Shell Island here at Riceville Beach. And it's that break, it's pretty shallow, but yeah. that break breaks, you know, it breaks pretty far out. It's oh, a yeah. long sandbar. Yeah. And so, you know, the places where you get into that kind of situation where you maybe you, you know, hit your head on the sand, it would be more, more places that have bad shore break, you right. know, that you're, the wave doesn't break out very far. So you're sitting in pretty close to the beach already. And when you take off, it's really shallow and your ride is almost going to finish on the beach. Mm -hmm. and it, you know, it jacks up right when you want to get off, and you don't get off. You get, you know, slammed onto the onto the sand, and that, that doesn't happen very much, though. Because yeah. even, you know, even uh, it's fun even to watch in shore break, yeah, it is, somebody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> but even in shore break, you know, that that wave comes in and kind of, you know, adds water to what you got there. And even if yeah. you get hammered, you're kind of in the foam. And mm -hmm. you know, I don't think I've ever seen anybody hit real hard. No, it's just. Uh, embarrassing you know when you get to you know sand in your ears and in your mouth yeah. and the, yeah. the tourists come up and say are you okay yeah. so, so. You need some help you know, and then when that happens to a new boat you know, oh yeah, yeah i mean it looks like gee the person's dead you know i mean it washes them up and you know so. but uh you know that's what the gear's for yeah yeah, we wear the life jackets, we wear the helmets, just because of that, you know, yeah. or you don't want to collide with another boater, or, you know, we'll do these uh, the enders, you know, and so, uh, unlike the surfboard, you can't just clear that. Yeah, you uh, can't bail out. So, you know, you could easily get hit by your buddy's boat, you know, as you go over the, you know, over the top or yeah, something. Yeah, you get hit by your own gear, because you've got to paddle, and, right. you know, if you're getting kind of worked around in the soup, and, and everything's kind of going its own way, depending on what the water's doing, you know, the paddle, I've, I've had to paddle, you know, hit me in the forehead before if I'm, say like if you're going out over a big wave and that foam pile takes you in the mm -hmm. chest, well your paddle's there and on either end of the shaft you've got this, you know, big piece of surface area, well, mm -hmm. you know, it can catch it and you come into the chest or your yeah. head you or something. Turn it. So, you try to turn it, uh, we try to, uh, we usually try to kind of punch through with a fist actually, yeah. you know, kind of like punch through the wave and the, so the shaft a lot of time out of the way. 
you know, that's another. Lesson. You're talking about some of these uh, milestone moments or something too, and uh, you know, the new boaters uh, they tend to going out. That's the big problem is, you know, and you see them they're like a deer in the headlights. You know, that, mm -hmm. what do I do? And it just and it's so sad because they get creamed. You know, yeah. <laughs> and you just have to grit your teeth and dig into that thing and it's uh, yeah. you know a little bit like a karate block almost because I you know like I like to have my fist in front of with my paddle and doing something like this and it does kind of break some of the waves yeah, it's almost like it almost like you know wedges makes a wedge and the wave parts and helps your body pass through yeah but yeah, some days, you know, it's a big, uh, you know, getting out, uh, you have a heck of a time, you know, and not everybody gets out, or you're lucky to get out one or two times, and then you're real careful that you get off the shoulder, so you don't have to go through that again. Mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah. Off the shoulder, is that just getting around the, yeah. the brakes, or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah when you'll, they you'll get take big, off and you'll ride the peak, you know, for a long way, hopefully, uh -huh. you know, and, uh, and if it's really nasty and there's really bad shore break and you just had a bear of a time getting out you know it just took you 15 minutes to even get out you know the last thing you're going to do sometimes is surf right into that close out and go all the way to shore you know you'll get you'll milk as much as you can out of a good ride and then as soon as you see that close out coming you, know, you cut up and off the lip and you know hope there's not a couple more set waves waiting to hammer you right behind it you cut off the lip and you just start digging as hard as you can to get back out Show any of the equipment or anything? Uh, sure, if you want to describe some of your stuff, just grab the camera. And yeah. Well, Does that yeah. work for you? Sure. Yeah. yeah. What should we we'll start with? Uh, kind of just our basic, basic layout of gear. Um, you get your uh, for for any kind of kayaking when you're in a deck boat, you've got uh, you've kind of got a basic cache of gear. You know, some of the things maybe you could go without, and you know. You, may, you can maybe get away with not having them, but but what, for what we recommend and what we use, and when a new person gets started, there's a basic set of gear that that we recommend everybody have. Okay, and and that basic set of gear is well, there's your boat, and there's your paddle. Those are pretty necessary. You can't get away without either of those two. Okay, and then you need a spray skirt. And a spray skirt, you know, is a neoprene. It goes around your waist, and it and then it attaches to the boat and keeps the water out of the boat. Well. You know, beyond those three things, you you could go out with just those three things, okay? But we always recommend, in addition to those two things, a life jacket and a helmet, um, just for obvious safety reasons. Um, so to begin, um, you know, I'll start with the paddles. Um, there's a wide variety of paddles out there, and a wide variety of price ranges. You can get uh, you can get you know little cheapy paddles as as low as probably about thirty bucks. And it's something that you'll want to use for about a day, <laughs> and then, but then the uh, then really high end paddles go all the way up to, gosh, I think 500 bucks now. You can spend for a paddle if you know, if you get the latest carbon fiber or you know handmade wood paddles. You know you can really spend a lot of money on some stuff. Um, but basically, you know, paddle's got a shaft. Paddle's got two blades. Um, you grip it. You paddle out. You know you. They've, uh, you know, you've usually got a, a power face and an off face, a um, back face and a front face, and uh, you know the, the first thing that people have to figure out is how to hold it right, you know, because a lot of people will pick it up wrong and you know they have no idea it's wrong and you know, especially something like this that's kind of got this articulated bent shaft. If somebody you know picks this up instead of a straight shaft paddle, they're going to be a little more confused. But yeah, I, was, I was kind so, of wondering about that because they're, they're not even symmetrical. I mean, they're actually right. off a little bit, and then you got the big side on one side. And well, you know, you got the, you know, the, the kayak manufacturers that make all this stuff, they're always trying to come up with the latest bells and whistles just like anything else, like a golf club or anything like that. You know, they've, they spend a lot of time doing R&D to, uh, yeah, they spend a lot of time doing R&D and they come up with shapes that they think are real beneficial for, for different types of things that, um, you know, either that maybe it's more powerful or maybe it's more, uh, gives you more control. Um, kind of like the different changes you get in tennis rackets with design. You maybe got more power versus control. Um, and then they've also got some things that are, you know, kind of ergonomical. You know, that the bench shaft paddles are kind of a newer thing that they're doing now because they say it puts your wrist in more of a uh, more of an ergonomic line, so that uh, so that you're not cocking your wrist back as much. 
a lot of people that uh, a lot of people that paddle and kayak you know on a very regular basis can develop wrist problems because when you're when you're flexing your wrist back and forth and then putting pressure on that flex joint it, you know it can get uncomfortable and you can develop some problems so anyway this is your this is your uh, that's kind of your standard kayak paddle um, this one is made by a, a manufacturer and then some people you know make their own paddles here's a paddle right here that um, that uh, you can see it's got a lot of the same features it's got the bent shaft it's got the uh, kind of the asymmetrical blades and um, this is a paddle that, uh, that somebody made for themselves that you know Ralph makes these paddles himself and so you can uh, you can go a long way making your own paddles and this has a lot of the same features that uh, that the you know the paddles that you buy in the shop would have so that's um, that's a basic on paddles and uh, <clears throat> move to the next piece is the spray skirt <laughs> like Ralph likes to say this is this is probably the piece of gear that keeps keeps kayaking from being accepted by everyone in the world because kayaking is already it's already so much fun and uh, there's so many different ways to do it whether you're out in the marsh you're in the surf you're on white water whatever but when you get into extreme kayaking sport, extreme kayaking sports you got to wear a spray skirt okay and a spray skirt is not real becoming it's not a real manly thing you basically uh, you basically have this tube here it's uh, called a tunnel and you uh, you stick your legs down through the tunnel and then you have to you know pull this up and over you and it and eventually it fits around your torso and you know putting it on looks really you know looks really funny and uh, and then once it's on it looks weird too you got this big deck that kind of hangs out in front of you and flops around and you know, it's just not a sexy piece of gear but it's a necessary piece of gear and uh, it really does a great job of course the purpose like I said before the purpose of a spray skirt is to keep the water out of the boat because this tunnel fits tightly around your torso you know and um, and then and then this rim here around is specifically made and tailored with um, with a rubber rand around the edge and that fits and seals right around the the cockpit lip of the kayak and uh, makes a really good watertight seal so you know you can go out if you didn't have a spray skirt on you could go out in the surf or a river or something like that for a couple of minutes and then your boat fills up your fun's over you know you put the spray skirt on you can go out all day long and you know get just a little bit of water in the boat maybe have to dump out once or twice so that's the spray skirt another necessary piece of gear if you're paddling a deck kayak and then we get to um, then we get to a couple of things that we uh, that we like to recommend to people and um, it's pretty obvious you know why you might want to wear a helmet um, here's a basic kayak helmet that you can pick up at uh, at any shop and um, you know you basically have a uh, you've got a strap with a buckle the strap goes under your chin you know it's, it's very similar to what a lot of people wear skateboarding or or uh, you know some other sports where you've got you know helmets to wear um, so you can pick that up at uh, you know pretty much any kayak shop a helmet's usually going to run you about 40 bucks something like that um, of course once again you know there's a, a wide variety of helmets you know helmets can go all the way from uh, you know your entry-level models that you could pick up for 35 bucks all the way up to you know custom carbon you know fiber helmets that are uh, you know 150 bucks so and then and then once again you know the creativity of kayakers come through and uh, you know some people go out to the Army Navy store and uh, buy the old World War II Kevlar helmet paint it up put some straps on put in their own outfitting and you know five bucks later you got a helmet <laughs> depends on much you value your head. yeah but it depends on much you value your head <laughs> a helmet's usually something you don't want to make on your own next piece of gear you know a lot of times uh, of course you know most people obviously know what a life jacket is um, we've been out on motor boats and everything all our lives and you know we know what life jackets are however when it comes to kayaking the old uh, the old orange you know things around the neck snap together in the middle you know, that doesn't really cut it um, you've got uh, for kayaking you've got specially made uh, vests personal flotation devices that are designed with your mobility in mind okay <clears throat> and these are even different than like a top-of-the-line 
wakeboarding life jacket. Um, the uh, the idea with kayaking is that you want to have you want to have this vest completely out of your way, for, because you you do such a wide range of motions when you're paddling and surfing and playing that you want to have a lot of the uh, a lot of the foam kind of cut out of the way, but you still you know you still need to have your flotation and uh, and generally all of these life jackets are Coast Guard certified, so you know they are they are safe to wear even though they're very low profile, and um, you know you can see there's a lot of adjustability in these as well a lot of straps that you can tighten up and uh, you know get a nice conforming custom fit. So that's your life jacket. What else am I missing? Okay, yeah, the other piece that's um, the other pieces we've got that are your necessities are um, are the boats. And right here with me today, I've got two boats that are specifically designed for surfing. Bring it in. Um, I've got two boats that are specifically designed for surfing. Actually, this would be a good. This tape just 